My name is Lorenzo Stevano. I work at the University of Montpellier. I'm a professor there. And actually, I do my research in one of the largest institutes in France, which is called Institut Charles Montpellier. In the south of France, at Montpellier, we are about 450 people working there, and it's an institute on materials chemistry. My field of research is uh, energy materials. We are part of a laboratory within this institute that works on many different topics related to energy materials and in our group we work on battery materials so what you find inside batteries this year is 2019 and 2019 Nobel Prize in Chemistry was given to my giants my giants are Professor Stan Whittingham, Professor John B. Goodenough and Professor Yoshino from Japan who are the fathers of the lithium batteries those that you find in your cell phone you can go very far away about which are the problematics and actually whatever is related to the development of batteries. We want actually batteries that are safer, cheaper, and that last for a long time. And actual batteries do not really fulfill all these requirements. So we want to go further and get better batteries. And then related to these, especially in lithium batteries, you have some compounds that are contained in them that are sort of called strategic. It's like oil, for instance. You know, oil, you find it only in some places in the world. And for battery, it is the same. For instance, lithium, uh, you find it everywhere, actually. You find it in seawater, but it's very diluted, so it's not convenient to get it out from seawater. And the reserves of lithium, actually, where it is sufficiently concentrated, are mainly located in South America. And many geopolitical, actual geopolitical issues that are going on nowadays, in, uh, in Bolivia, for instance, they actually are due to what is going on with the property of lithium reserves. Nowadays, lithium batteries have some strategic issues. And actually, to avoid these issues, you want to move away from the use of cobalt and the use of lithium. And to do that, you can move to different uh, cations that are different from lithium. And for instance, other alkali of alkali earth metals, so sodium, potassium, or calcium, and magnesium where uh, you can get similar working potentials, which means several energies that are stored by your materials. And the advantage of calcium is that you find it everywhere. Calcium carbonate, you find it everywhere in the world. And on the other side, the sulfur is actually has the same advantage. It's extremely cheap and you find it really everywhere. So if you were able to put together calcium and sulfur and make a battery that is quite cheap, that works well, well, that would be a very good target actually. And the problem is working with calcium battery is complicated because calcium doesn't like to deposit calcium ions that do not like to deposit uh, over calcium metal. And we need to develop a specific electrolyte that allow this reaction. And this reaction is not simple to, to handle. And also on the sulfur side, you have some issues that one has to resolve. To study battery materials, the best is studying the battery materials inside the battery while the battery is working. And it's exactly what we develop in our laboratory. It's what we call operando methods, which means that we try to go and look into the battery while it is working to understand the chemical reactions that are going. And what we do here, for instance, in Electra, in Electra we go with a specific technique called X-ray absorption spectroscopy, and with this technique, we go inside the battery and we follow the chemical state of calcium and sulfur during the working of the batteries. We, we hope to find out the mechanism how this material works as batteries. This is a first time pristine material never understood before. So we did it with lithium uh, sulfur, but this is different and uh, well, we just see coming out uh, fresh uh, data and we are surprised. The advantage of our application to CERIC is that we can put together two techniques that are very good to study our battery materials. We have X-ray absorption spectroscopy, but we also have um, solid state NMR spectroscopy that will allow us actually to understand within the batteries which are the chemical reactions. 